and welcome back. I'm Di, and today I'm bringing you another vloggy type, kind of more of a standalone thoughts <laughs> video. I am finishing up my Manga Pride readathon selections. I haven't read through everything that I had put aside for the readathon yet, but I do want to at least try to read a little bit more before the month is over. It is Tuesday the 29th when I'm filming this, so this probably will not go up until July because I normally like to post my manga videos on Monday, but I thought I'd just go ahead and give this a go again. I'm still not sure about whether or not I like this vloggy style, um, immediate thoughts kind of video. I kind of feel like sometimes because I'm giving you my immediate thoughts that I may leave out some things that have crossed my mind while I read the selections but I thought I'd give this a go again um, hopefully the lighting is a little better I am sitting at my desk again and I just got off work it is a million degrees right now hence the very casual look I put on a little bit of makeup for you <laughs> But yeah, so I have uh, three standalone selections here that I'd like to read through and then give you my thoughts on. The first one is Our Dining Table, which is by Mito Ori. This one is published by Seven Seas and is rated teen. Then I have I Married My Best Friend to Shut My Parents Up by Kodama Naoko. This one is also published by Seven Seas and rated older teen. And then I have The Bride Was a Boy, Story and Art by Chi'i. This one is published by Seven Seas and Rated Teen. So I didn't realize that all of these selections were Seven Seas. So that's pretty interesting. But I am super excited to get to these three selections. I'm probably going to read them in this order. I have had my dine, or our dining table on my shelf for a while and just never made it a priority to get to and there were other things I wanted to read so I'm really looking forward to this one because it sounded super cute and then I married my best friend to shut my parents up and the bride was a boy I got from Dylan um, his favorites list included these standalones and so I decided to go ahead and pick those up when I was hauling for the readathon and so yeah, so I will be reading these selections. Let me go ahead and dive into our dining table right now and I will be back with you in a bit. So I just finished our dining table. This was a super cute story. I laughed out loud a couple times. My daughter can confirm that because she's sitting out here with me while I was reading this but I feel like the little blurb on the back is a little misleading I mean we do see Yutaka make onigiri but it doesn't necessarily show how skilled he is in cooking in general but I did enjoy how the relationship between Yutaka, Minoru, and Tane was kind of founded on this really huge onigiri that <laughs> Yutaka had made and then subsequently shared with Tane one day, which is how they ended up meeting. There was a lot of food in this and so it made me really hungry. Um, <laughs> the food looked really good too. And there are a variety of dishes that they eat together. There aren't any recipes though, unlike what you'd see in something like What Did You Eat Yesterday, which is another series that I really enjoy. This one doesn't really tell you how to cook the things that it is showing, but it does show you what it looks like. And I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the conversation between Minoru and Yutaka, who Tane calls Yukata, which if you didn't know is a summer kimono, but he never tries to like correct Tane. He just lets Tane call him that 
and I thought that was super sweet. Something else that I kind of thought going into this was different was that the back of this volume or installment, the summary part, kind of makes it seem like Minoru and Tane are alone, like they are, they don't have parents or relatives anymore. And that's not the case, and it was something that was surprising, yet I really enjoyed the element that Tane and Minoru's family brought to this story. The story also explores Yutaka's family situation, which was interesting as well. And I just really, really enjoyed the story. It's something that I definitely think I will be rereading several times. I'm super glad that I finally got to reading this. It did take me a little bit because it is a bit of a thicker volume, but I enjoyed it nonetheless and I will definitely be rereading this again in the future. So now that I have finished that one and it has taken me quite a bit of time to get through, I'm going to go ahead and jump into I married my best friend to shut my parents up. I'm going to change it up a little bit with a little bit of girl's love. And this one's rated older teen, so I'm expecting it to get a little bit spicier, I guess? Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this one as well. This title, of course, seems like it tells me a lot, so I'm looking forward to the story. I will be back with you in a bit. So I just finished I Married My Best Friend to Shut My Parents Up and I enjoyed this one but it kind of made me a little mad as well. So the title pretty much tells you the basis of this story. She is, or I should say Morimoto, is constantly being hounded by her parents to marry and you know, have kids and do the, you know, do the thing. And so her friend from high school just happens to be in a situation where she needs a place to stay because her apartment's being renovated. And she moves in with Morimoto and seeing how Morimoto's parents are constantly hounding her about getting married, she suggests that they marry each other. And so, like I said, it's pretty much the basis of the story. But what made me really angry about this story is how her parents treated her, Morimoto's parents. How Morimoto's parents treated the friend, and I can't even remember her name right now. Hana. Hana is the best friend's name, and the main character's name is Machi. And so... Yeah, I just really got mad with how they reacted to the situation, the parents reacted to the situation, and then we see little snippets about how Machi's mother treated her while she was growing up, always wanting her to be perfect and have the best grades, and how Machi's father took out his anger on Machi's mom for the fact that Machi wasn't quote-unquote perfect. I didn't like those scenes at all and they kind of brought back bad memories if you know what I mean. It's just probably why it's hitting the way it is with me. Uh, but on the other hand I thought the relationship between these two girls was very sweet. This is rated older teen and pretty much just one panel in this entire volume is what makes it older teen. If they had taken out that one panel, this could have been teen. At least in my eyes, that one panel, which I really don't feel gave anything to the story, was the reason why this volume had to be older teen. But that being said, I did enjoy this volume. I definitely enjoyed the art style. The art style was very pretty to look at throughout this entire volume. And I'm looking forward to exploring some more of this mangaka's work because 
In the back, there's a little mangaka note introducing herself, and I guess she writes a little bit more of a darker type of content, maybe a little bit more spicy. And so, yeah, there is one back here that says Netsuzo Trap, which sounds in which I think I'll be looking into just to see what it's all about. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this one. And now I've got one left to read. And that is The Boy Was a Bride. So I'm going to dive into this one. And I'll be back with you in a bit. So I just finished The Bride Was a Boy. I believe I might have mispronounced the mangaka's name at the beginning of this video, but after going over it with my daughter, I believe it's pronounced Chi. And so, I really, really enjoyed this story. It is autobiographical. It does say down here, true story and art by Chi. And the art style is just so cute. She has this little hair that's always out of place, and it just adds to the cuteness of the characters and the drawings. I found a lot of things in here were very educational. Um, there was a lot to read. I wasn't expecting this to have as much, not dialogue, but text. There was a lot of information on gender transitioning and gender identity disorder and transgender and explaining terms and things that the mangaka went through. It was very educational, very interesting. A lot of it I was already pretty familiar with, but to hear it from the point of view of a person that has gone through it was very interesting. And again, the art style was just so cute. Her husband is, he just seems so sweet. He was very understanding about everything. Just, it kind of makes me wonder if he was really that perfect, if he is really that perfect. He just didn't seem to there just didn't seem to be anything about him that ever once questioned if a relationship with Chi was going to be something that he couldn't handle. And I just really appreciated him for that. I appreciated this story. I appreciated all of the information that is provided in this one shot and I was just so happy for how the mangaka is able to live her life the way she wants to live it with the person that she loves. This volume definitely took me a lot more time to read than I had expected. It has so many beautiful um, color pages in the beginning. A lot more than you usually get with um, any manga volume, really. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this volume. We do also get little snippets from, his name is Husband Kun. <laughs> little snippets from him directly. He actually writes a little, um, kind of a little letter in the back talking about how this project came to be and things like that. And I just really enjoyed this one. I definitely think that it's worth the read. And I really love the art style. I really, really love the art style. And so that will do it for this standalone thoughts video definitely took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take um, especially because I'm filming this a lot later in the day than I normally film plus I'm filming after work which is something that I never do but I was very happy with my reads of 
these standalone volumes all from Seven Seas, which was surprising. But I think my favorite of these three is definitely our dining table. Like I had said before, I believe it's something that I'm going to reread a lot. And even between my read of our dining table and I married my best friend to shut my parents up, there was a food item in I shut I married my best friend to shut my parents up that directly re corresponds to something that was eaten in this story and there was a little bit of a funny moment with that and just seeing that food item made me think of what happened in this story and I had to laugh a little bit but I really enjoyed reading these standalones. I hope you will check them out. Let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these stories and what you thought of them. If you have made it to this part of the video, if you would leave me an onigiri emoji down in the comments below, or if you could leave the word rice ball or onigiri if you know how to spell it, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out and that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.